there's an Iranian fast attack ship coming right at them. So how about you just go away and we'll forget we saw you. And then they just keep driving oh, right towards them. And then this Iranian oh. fast attack ship gets within like 15 miles of Charlie Group, which is like point blank range. For Origin Jazz Homes Reacts, and this is America obliterates half of Iran's navy in eight hours. Operation Praying Mantis. <laughs> Praying Mantis, really? So they like laid a trap or something? Okay. This is about the fat electrician, obviously. Yeah. Eight hours, like insanely, like entire army, huh? Navy, sorry. And oh, half of in Iran's navy, yeah. But half is like a big number. I mean, I don't know like how good Iran is, like especially when this happened. But half is like a big number. Half of Iran, like this, eight hours. Yeah, there you go. Okay, I guess this is, this is probably around like World Wars and Cold Wars because I'm like if I can see the trend, like U.S. was U.S. was really really intense, like World War Two, post Cold War, and around that time, right? Nowadays, U.S.'s response is like way more tamed than you would think compared to before, right? Before it just like guns blazing, here it comes. So I'm guessing this is like around Cold War or something. So it's going to be interesting. Yeah, Fat Edition is a great channel, I guess. Talks about different uh, things that happen, military related. It just can be literally anything from the, you know, R&D of guns to literally some absurd story. Especially gangster stories. Like most gangster marine, most gangster politician. It's just awesome. So yeah, that's always fun. He should make like, uh, you know, Bismarck video, right? I mean, I know like Bismarck is one of the famous things and he usually like makes videos about like less known people, those like should be more known. But Bismarck would be just great if the way he would cover it. So let's go this one. Yes, the time that the U.S. Navy got upset and destroyed half of Iran's entire naval fleet in a single eight hour work day. <laughs> Today we're talking about Operation Praying Mantis. But real quick, this video is sponsored by Zydax Custom Gaming PCs. They are all built right here in America with American-based tech support and a lifetime warranty. It's the computer that I use and the one that I would recommend. I'll have them linked down below if you want to check them out. Let's get to this video. All right, important background info. 1980, Iraq decided to invade Iran. Why? Don't really care. Not pertinent to the story. However, at the end of that war, Iran decides, hey, we're going to pull a page out of the old art of war by Sun Tzu. We're going to cut off the enemy supply lines, deprive the enemy of nice things. It's going to work out great. Iraq's got a weak navy. We're going to wipe out their navy. And then every time they send out an oil tanker through the Persian Gulf, we're going to blow that up. So they can't sell any liquid dinosaur. They can't make any money. They go broke. We win the war. Hooray. It's a solid plan. So they well, do exactly that. Too. Then Kuwait comes out of left field and they're like, hey, we've been financially backing Iraq through this entire war for the past seven years. We need to make sure they win so we can get our money back. So we're going to go ahead and let Iraq use our oil tankers to export oil. So Iran is like, well, that's an easy problem to solve. I'll just blow up all the Kuwaiti oil tankers as well, which is exactly what they do. <laughs> but here's the catch. Kuwait at this point in time is like the one major exporter of oil that wasn't really part of OPEC, meaning that they were selling oil on the global market significantly cheaper than everybody else, driving down the entire oil market. And now that their oil tankers are getting blown up as well, it means that Kuwait can no longer sell oil on the cheap cheap, meaning that Iran has now inadvertently committed the cardinal sin of the late 20th century, raising gas prices. Now the entire Western world looks over at the Persian Gulf like the fuck? The ghost of Sun Tzu's <laughs> sitting there shaking his head like that's that's the one exception I would have messed with any supply line except for that. <laughs> I'm gonna invoke Sun Tzu. Sun Tzu just you know sitting up and over like God damn it, this is not the way to do it. This is not art of war. This is fucking up the war. <laughs> well, like, like Iran is just I, you know diplomacy. What the fuck is a diplomacy? You want to do that? I'm gonna blow you up as well. <laughs> How the fuck they're like, okay, we are messing with oil here. All the global powers, like with this one resource, everybody basically loses their mind over is oil. And they're gonna fuck up the oil without thinking about like what kind of ripple effect this will have, what kind of people I'll piss off. Because we all know what happens next. America, fuck yeah. <laughs> I'm hearing that music. Yeah, America then proceeds to assemble the largest naval convoy operation since World War II, send them into the Persian Gulf to protect Kuwaiti oil tankers. It is at this moment that Iran should have been like, well, that's unfortunate, time to figure out plan B because this obviously is not going to work out. However, they decide that they're going to double down. What they're going to do is they're going to take a bunch of magnetic underwater mines and they're just going to spread them out all over the Persian Gulf in international waters and 
that's not going to have any consequences at all. So fast forward, this. April 14th, 1988, the USS Samuel B. Roberts, a guided missile frigate, which is basically brand new at this point, this is like its first big operation, is out there escorting new. a Kuwaiti oil tanker, and it runs into a minefield, hits a mine, blows up the keel of the ship. The keel is this bottom part right here. It like supports and stabilizes the yeah. structure of the entire ship, and it gets blown completely. Yeah, keel doesn't, it doesn't uh, support the structure, but it keeps it stable. Without it, it just like basically fall down, basically, you know, because of the rudder and everything. But yeah, it's like a brand new thing. Wait a minute. It's a brand new fucking thing. <laughs> just blow up. What I don't understand about iron is like, why are they flexing? So I don't know how iron was around this time. I guess I'll have to search how much they you know, they had the power. But I'm pretty sure it's not going to be like global top scale level of power. So what I don't understand is how they can see USA and just like, you know, yeah, I'm just going to puff up my chest and just still like, going to attack. Like double down, basically throw down mines and everything rather than backing out. And it's not about defense. They're literally attacking. They're trying to suppress Iraq and oil and everything. So when US Navy gets involved around this time, especially, they're going to just puff off their chest like, oh, I can do this shit. Like they have no diplomacy. That's, <laughs> that's the only thing I think of. Completely in half. At this point, the only thing holding this boat together is the actual deck. One second, everything's fine. The next second, there's a 15 foot wide hole in the bottom of your ship. Everything's on fire and water is rushing in. The USS Samuel B. Roberts took on half of its weight in water in the first minute. This is a catastrophic amount of damage that would sink 99% in one minute. of ships, but as fate would have it, the crew of the USS Samuel B. Roberts had already been winning competitions for having the best damage control crew in the Navy. So the entire crew gets to work. They're putting out fires, they're plugging How? holes. They're literally cinching the hole together with steel cables trying to stabilize it because the only thing holding it together is a deck at this point over the course of wait a minute it, it took half of water like half of water in its weight or whatever you said in a minute how are they going to do anything how is that working like it must be like big ass hole and it's a frigate right so it must like something big ass boat if it can take like half a type of water just one minute how much time they're going to have to do anything this is insane. So the next five hours, the entire crew fights their ass off and somehow manages to get the situation under control and limp the ship all the way back to Dubai where they can get it to a port. And the most incredible part of all of it, not a single American was killed. Only 10 men were injured during the fire and the initial explosion. So the crew survived, the boats basically completely destroyed. Then America sends in an underwater crew, figure out what happened. They find the remnants of the mine. They check out the other mines. Yep, they're Iranian. At this point, now somebody has to inform the president because this is a big deal. And the president at this point in time is, let me check my notes, uh, fucking Ronald Reagan. I'm from the government and I'm here to help. <laughs> so they go ahead and they brief Ronald Reagan on oh, everything shit. that happened. He's super happy that everybody survived and he's like okay well here's what we're gonna do we're gonna yeah reagan is like basically what conservative basically pray to or something like their god or something obviously i'm exaggerating but i can just imagine what his response would be around this time issue a proportional response and what the u.s navy heard was I all right so here's the plan iran currently has three oil rigs in <laughs> the persian gulf that are not being used for drilling oil How do you quantify military that? bases for their naval operations so the u.s navy is going to go ahead and take out all three of those now i don't really know what the guided missile frigate to oil rig exchange ratio is but yeah. we're going to go ahead and err on the side of caution and say that it's not quite proportional enough yet i was about to say like what is a proportional like how are you going to quantify that like Proposal equal to what? <laughs> So Iran also really only has like two <laughs> modern naval vessels. That's I don't, I don't know. I don't want to post it, but seriously, imagine like Ronald Reagan sending letter to Iranian powers or whatever. Yeah, the response is going to be proportional to the attack with quotation. Like Iranians basically try to sweat like, oh, what does that mean? The Iranian frigate <laughs> Sahand and the Iranian frigate Sabatland. They're going to go ahead and take out at least one of those, maybe both. We'll see how proportional they want to get. And then by the time they get all that done, that should be a nice eight hour work day. It'll be time to clock out and go get some ice cream. So in order to get all this done by quitting time, they're going to go ahead and establish three different surface attack groups. Each group is going to have two destroyers and one bonus ship. That bonus ship is either going to be an amphibious landing ship or a frigate. Either way, they're all going to be identified as Bravo, Charlie, and Delta. Bravo group is tasked with taking out two oil rigs. Charlie group is tasked with taking out the one remaining oil rig. And Delta's mission is to go hunt down those two frigates and take them out. And then just for insurance purposes, we're also going to have the USS Enterprise parked right outside the Persian Gulf to provide air support, you know, in case we need it. 
So, April 18th, 1988, four days after the mining of the USS Samuel B. Roberts, Operation Praying Mantis goes into full swing, and Bravo Group shows up at their oil rig first. At which point, they radio over to the oil rig and inform them that they will be blowing it up in five minutes and that they should all leave. So, a bunch of people start leaving. They hop in tugboats and take off. Bravo Group, seeing that they're making an honest effort to actually evacuate, agrees to give them 15 more minutes. So, fast forward 20 minutes later, they send out another radio message, hey, Time's up. They then fire the five inch guns right over the top of the oil rig with the round set to air burst. What if somebody was in the, let's just say, doing the business, in the potty or whatever? I don't know the phrase, like I'm confused with Brutal News. Yeah, but what if somebody's there and didn't get the message and just like reading the newspaper? Like, okay, oh damn, the food was so bad, it's taking a long time. And so they, oh, time's up. Like, what? <laughs> what the fuck? Obviously, I'm guessing that you know alarms would go off in the ship, but I don't know. Maybe alarm was shut off or something. Hopefully, scaring off any stragglers. And it is at this point that some Iranian military member decides that he is going to audition to be the main character of this story because he hops on a 23 millimeter anti-aircraft gun and opens fire on Bravo Group. And without skipping a beat, one of the five-inch guns on one of the destroyers just goes poof and just fucking direct hit smokes this dude. Barely and just fucking direct hit smokes this dude. Barely touches the rest of the oil rig. This guy, definitely not the main character, but the silver lining, he at least made it into the credits as baloney miss cloud number one. Now, obviously I'm paraphrasing here, but at this point, Bravo Group radios over to the oil rig one last time, something along the lines of, hey, does anybody else need to find out what it's like to chew five gum? Are you fuckers ready to quit? The oil rig finally radios back and is like, yeah, yeah, please cease fire. We're gonna leave. So all the Iranian military members leave, Bravo Group decides to open up on it for a little bit with the five inch guns before sending over a couple of Hueys full of Marines. The Marines hop out, place some demo charges, hop back on the helicopters, take off. The entire oil rig blows up and already things are getting more proportional. Yep. And while all that was happening, Charlie Group made it to their first oil rig as well, and pretty much the exact same thing played out. The only differences were, Charlie Group didn't have Marines to place the demo charges, they had Navy SEALs, and when the Iranians opened up with the 23mm anti-aircraft guns, they just decided to keep firing 5-inch shells at the oil platform until it burst into flames and burnt the entire thing to the ground. At which point, the commander <laughs> of the destroyer kind of looks over at the Navy SEALs and is like, Sorry, I guess you guys get to sit this one out. Oh, mission got canceled? Good. And while all that's going down, Bravo Group's already making their way over to the... <laughs> Navy says, oh no. We didn't get to do like once in a lifetime job of basically destroying an empty tanker. Great. <laughs> They're fucking seals, man. Come on. Oh, this is so good. I like it just basically they just start, just con continually attack it. Like, oh, you know, should we stop, sir? And I'll just keep going. Don't stop until there's a smoke there. The third oil rig, at which point they pick up something on radar, and it's definitely another enemy ship headed right towards them. And at this point, you have to remember, this is the late 1980s. None of the American sailors have seen naval warfare on this scale. The pucker factor is on. They are getting harpoon missiles ready, and they are about to get in, like, one of the biggest naval fights since World War II. At which point, whoever's in charge of Bravo Group decides to take a deep breath, and they're like, okay, let's just... Let's send up a helicopter real quick just to verify that it's actually an enemy ship. So the helicopter goes up, radios back to Bravo Group. It's definitely a warship, but it's a Soviet destroyer. At which point everybody's like, what? What is happening right now? So they radio over to this Russian destroyer and they're like, what are your intentions? And the Russian commander radios back in broken English. I swear to God, this is a real quote. I'm just here to take pictures for history. Look, I know that I bash on the Soviet Union and communism every single chance I get, but this time around, I gotta give it to them. These guys know how to party. Just straight up rolling into the middle of the largest naval operation since World War II to eat popcorn and watch. It's incredible. At this point, Iran finally figures out that there's something going on. There's more nefarious than that, I'm sure. It's just like, it's more than just like, oh, let's have fun, like more reconnaissance and shit, like more observation. But it's really fun to like, think like that. Oh, look at that, so it's just, oh, it's, for once it's not USA versus Soviet Union. Let's see iron getting cooked. 
going on, but they don't really know what, so they just begin attacking any ship they can find, and the first ship they found was a civilian cargo ship called the Willy Tide, that they begin attacking with bog hammer style speedboats. So the Willy Tide radios for help, the USS Enterprise responds by sending up a bunch of A6 intruders, as well as F-14 Tomcats. The A6 intruders show up, start dropping cluster bombs, they end up hitting one of the speedboats and scattering the rest. The civilian cargo ship is saved, hooray, cutting back to Charlie group, now there's an Iranian fast attack ship coming right at them. So they radio over like, hey, yeah, we're kind of going around blowing up all your stuff, but also we've got a very specific list. You're not on it. So how about you just go away and we'll forget we saw you. The Iranian fast attack ship messages back. Sounds good. We'll do that. And then they just keep driving oh, right towards them. And then this Iranian oh. fast attack ship gets within like 15 miles of Charlie group, which is like point blank range for a naval battle. Charlie group radios again. Why, Dude, man? what? are you doing? To which they respond, I'm following orders. And then they proceeded to lock I their mean... radar on Charlie Group, which Charlie Group can see. At which point Charlie Group immediately launches five missiles directly at the Iranian vessel. The Iranian vessel fires a harpoon missile back at Charlie Group. Both groups now have missiles in the air screaming towards one another. The Americans launch countermeasures shooting up chaff rockets that end up catching the harpoon missile, detonating it in midair. The Iranian vessel, on the other hand, did not have any countermeasures capable of stopping the newer technology behind the American missiles and it would end up getting sunk pretty much immediately. Then before anybody can really even fully digest what just happened, Radar picks up three Iranian F-4s screaming towards Charlie Group. Okay, this is like Cold War 1980s. During this time, US and Soviet, you know, both were like, who's the more jacked one? Just constantly, you know, putting themselves like with steroids and shit. So the technology was literally different than anybody else. I mean, at least today you'd find similarities because somebody bought from somebody and just like developed the technology or something. Sure. It's like, I won't be surprised like people can find equally enough technology. But back then, they would be like like fighting completely different things, like alien, almost alien type of shit, like completely different. What I understand is like, why do these Iranians have this kind of balls to basically, oh, I'm going to like attack USA. They, they're like, oh, for God's sake, we have to send a message and we're doing this. This is not a fight. Right, this is this is just like one-sided shit, right? You're not in our list. Just go away, man. This is proportional things that's going on. This is <laughs> it's like, all right, like, you know, we, st we still have orders. Like, oh, like, they're, you know, we're going to die, I guess. This is insane, man. Group. Charlie Group then turns, fires a bunch of surface-to-air missiles at the F-4s. The F-4s see him coming. They're like, oh, shit. They pop a U-turn and try to outrun him. F-4s, while they are extremely fast, can't outrun missiles, so one of the missiles ends up blowing a wing off one of the F-4s. Now America has taken out an entire naval vessel and an F-4 that they did not plan on taking out, and it's throwing off all of our proportions. And because of that, American leadership orders Bravo Group to stand down. We're not going to go take out that third oil rig. And right as soon as that order gets given out, Delta Group chimes in and is like, hey, we found that frigate we were looking for. So now nobody knows what to do because on one hand, things are already getting out of control, but on the other hand, we really want to take out these frigates. So American leadership decides, well, we might not even have to make a hard decision. Maybe that's not even the frigate and the radar is wrong. Why don't you go ahead and send a couple A6 intruders over, do a flyby. They can verify that it's actually this new modern frigate and if it is, we'll make a decision from there. Or so they thought, because the A6 pilots are about to decide that they are in fact the main characters of this story. You see, the USS Enterprise and its aircraft aren't really supposed to be doing a whole lot, they're more or less just there for insurance. In fact, they're only allowed to engage the enemy under one of two conditions. One, the President of the United States signs off on it, which is actually what happened with the speedboats earlier, or two, they get fired upon first. So they got told to go fly by this boat to verify that it is in fact the new modern frigate, but they didn't get told how to fly by the boat, so they drop down 50 feet above the water and just gun it, and they buzz the entire ship. So the ship opens fire with its AA guns, but these planes are so low to the water, the AA guns can't actually aim down low enough, so all the anti-aircraft fire goes right over the top of them. They continue to stay low enough till they get out of anti-aircraft gun range, and then they pull up, at which point the ship launches a bunch of surface-to-air missiles at them. They drop chaff as a countermeasure, takes care of those, no big deal. They then go around, do a U-turn, send a radio message to this frigate, I'm going to sink you now. Which they can now legally do, because remember, <laughs> the ship fired on them first. Victim to one of the classic blunders. So the A-6 fires an anti-ship harpoon missile, and the second they pull the trigger on that, the fire control team from the USS Enterprise is like, what the fuck are you doing? We're not supposed to be killing things yet. And the A-6... <laughs> Imagine... <laughs> 
imagine screams going up proposal proposal this is not proposal says <laughs> are like look they fired at us first them's the rules and the uss enterprise is like holy shit okay i guess let him have it. Then the Harpoon missile finally makes impact. It's a bullseye. The A6s do a U-turn, go, drop another 500-pound laser-guided bomb right through the deck of this frigate, fly past it, do another U-turn, come back, drop a 1,000-pound bomb on it. Then they radio over to the Enterprise and like, yeah, it's definitely gonna sink. We're gonna head back. So the A6s take off, headed back to the Enterprise, and like five minutes later, Delta Group shows up with their warships. Okay, this like A6 thing, the way he described it, how it's like a backup shit. And still being like the main thing to sing these frigates. The level of difference of technology between two. First of all, there's like if you played a, like some, let's say some RPG video game, which has like some prefixes in your armor. The armor, if somebody do a melee damage, let's just say, your armor can deflect some damage. But you're such a high level that you don't even attack, but your armor, just basically your armor kills people. Right? Kills enemy. As soon as they attack, they die. This is that kind of shit. Like A6 is just when they're killed. Yeah, frigate my ass. <laughs> <laughs> and begin firing on the already sinking frigate. They hit the magazine, the frigate explodes, rapidly sinks to the ocean floor. At this point, naval leadership is like, okay, too. Jesus Christ, everybody stop killing things. We need to figure out what all happened. We got to keep this proportional, remember. Oh, they start radioing back and forth. Everybody's figuring out what everybody did, if anybody's hurt, what's going on, the whole story. And then as the ace... What? Damn, the chrome's going insane for some reason. If anybody's hurt, what's going on, the whole story. And then as the A6s are making their way back to the USS Enterprise, guess what they happen to fly past? The other modern frigate. So now the entire US Navy's looking at this last frigate like SpongeBob looking at a jug of water. I don't need it. I don't need it. I need but also, like, realistically speaking, the A6s are pretty much out of ammunition. The only thing they have left are 2,000-pound bombs, and those just aren't going to be enough by themselves without a harpoon missile to take down this ship anyways. So, they really are just going to fly by and verify that it's the modern frigate. So, the A6 intruders go ahead, they do their flyby. It is, in fact, the new frigate that they thought it was, and it does, in fact, open fire on the A6s. A6s make it out completely unscathed, at which point they pop a U-turn, and one of the A6 pilots is like, hmm. It's the bullseye womp rats my T-16 back home. So the A-6 pulls up, gaining altitude, and then dives down, aims its nose right at the frigate at like a 35 degree angle. They're doing a good old fashioned dive bombing run like it's fucking World War II. The AA guns start firing, there's bullets whizzing past the plane, but they're committed now. They're closing in, closing in. The bombardier behind the pilot lets the pilot know, hey, I'm locked on. At which point, bombs away, the pilot pulls up, and the bomb goes right down the fucking smokestack of this boat. Blows up, completely destroying the entire engine room. That frigate is now dead in the water with no power. The A6s go ahead and radio in that they have completely disabled this frigate, at which point the American leadership calls a complete ceasefire. They're going to go ahead and let that frigate survive get towed off, potentially be repaired. With the US Navy having effectively disabled or destroyed over half of Iran's functioning Navy, the US military decides to call it a good day, ends Operation Praying Mantis, we all get to live happily ever after. Except, later that night, Iran decided that they wanted to fight a little bit more, and they launched a bunch of silkworm anti-ship missiles at American vessels. Luckily, no American vessels were actually hit. However, this is now a huge political problem, because America has been mad at the fact that Iran even had silkworm missiles for years at this point, and the American government has made it very clear to Iran that if they ever used them, they would be going to war with America, period. That's set in stone. So the Reagan administration, not wanting to kick off World War III in the 1980s, reaches out to the Iranian government and is like, here's what's going to happen. You're going to go ahead and admit that that was an accident. I'm going to sweep it under the rug and we're never going to talk about it again. Because if this makes headline news and the American people find out, I'm going to have to get real proportional around here. So Iran's like, okay, fine, whatever. It was an accident. Let's sweep that whole thing under the rug. But I am... St I, I still don't understand. I still like... I, I just, I, what the fuck? What the fuck is happening with Iran? All this shit, and they know the political backlash of it. They know the threat. Like, if you use this, we are coming. Like, this is like, it will become like an image thing. Right? We have like Soviet Union to worry about right now. We can be seen weak. What is Iran doing? I don't understand what part of them think, like, okay, we can do this. Who are running the show? Like, no, like nobody has any political brain there. 
Then nobody thought anything f- more than few feet ahead or something. What are we going to do tomorrow? Fuck tomorrow. Let's talk about now. Is that what the fuck was happening? This is insane. I've never seen shit like this. Still going to take America to international court to try to prove that it was a war crime to take out my oil rigs. That way I can get reparations and make America pay for it. So they go to international court. They lay out the case. The international court is looking at America like, okay, well, first of all, you're the fraction people. I don't know how you think that this is proportional, but it definitely wasn't. Second of all, according to the Amity Act, you absolutely should not have attacked their oil rigs. This is probably a war crime. At which point the representative for America is like, well, actually, if you read the Amity Treaty between Iran and the United States, it only talks about ships and boats. It don't say shit about oil rigs, meaning I wasn't obligated to not attack those oil rigs. At which point the court is like, hold on, hold on, hold on. Fucking, he's right, son of a bitch. Okay, well, I guess America's innocent because I've said it once and I'll say it again. It's never a war crime the first time. And now for the best part of the entire story, America now <laughs> proceeds to go over to Dubai. I mean, look, but proportional to what? Proportional to how America responds? Well, Iran didn't get nuked, so it is proportional, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> because Japan got nuked. So Iran got like, yeah, it was proportional. They could passively aggressively say like, this was proportional, if you know what I mean. You take out our one boat, we take out your half a navy. You launch our tag at us, we drop a nuke. That's proportional. I pick up what's left of the USS Samuel B. Roberts, tow it all the way back to Maine, then take the ship out of the water, get it in dry dock, cut out the entire damaged section of the ship, including the engine compartment, build another module to fit in its place. This thing weighs like 300 tons. They jack it up, weld it right where it's at, get everything rehooked up, reconnected. And this boat is back out on the ocean one year later on April 1st, 1989. It then goes on to get recommissioned and serves in the Navy until 2015. I mean, playing Battleship against America's got to suck, right? Like, haha, I've sunk your frigate. And America's like, first of all, no, you didn't. Second of all, fuck your entire Navy as it picks up your board and just throws it at the wall. So in conclusion, if you do ever find yourself <laughs> being the leader of a foreign nation one day, Citizen, the best advice that I can possibly give you is A, do whatever you can to not raise gas prices. And B, whatever you do, do not fuck with America's boats. We do not like that shit. Thank you for watching. Best way to support the channel is like, comment, subscribe. Maybe go buy some merch at thefatelectrician.com. Quack, bang, out. Anything more? Mm, no. All right, seriously, people talk about like Vietnam, right? And all these like wars and just like, oh, since World War Two, US, USA has been losing, like without seeing the detail of it. I mean, OK, but when you see shit like this, you realize like what another level USA is like they are they are literally playing a video game with a guard mode or something. Right. Like they are at the level 15, everything else like level eight or something. It's like you can't even do damage. You try to sink their ship, they'll just patch it up and use that for next 30 years. How the fuck that happens? The, the, even their soldiers, their pilots and everybody is like, oh, we are so above you. Fuck the orders. We are the backup, but we're still going to take down your frigates because that's what we can do. That technology was that advanced. They had like literal flare type the thing that that could basically just, you know, any incoming missile would be, de- you know, destroyed in the air. But Iran didn't. That alone screwed Iran completely. That alone. Otherwise, the uh, USA would have taken some damage if they didn't have that. How the hell Iran thought like there is any possible way they can take on U.S. in any capacity? I don't understand that shit. This was one of the most baffling thing I saw. Like, I don't know who was in charge during these times. This this was completely insane. Well, there was America obliterates half of Iran's navy in eight hours. Operation praying mantis. Is it praying mantis? Or operation just beat the shit out of him. It's like just you know operation boxing or something. <laughs> operation one side or something. This is there, there was no praying mantis. Praying mentis implies that there is like some competition. This is my channel, the fat nutrition. If you like my reaction, don't forget to subscribe. And yeah, I'll see you next time.